Hi, everyone. So this is day two of Throwing Shade, lesson three. Um, so we're going to throw a little bit of shade. It's very shady, right? So we are on uh, page uh, one, uh, 174, uh, determining the graphs of linear inequalities. So if you look right here, uh, this is at the bottom. So we were graphing this line right here, this inequality. So y is greater than 4x minus 6. So this is the first thing that we do. Okay, let me, let me help you out here if you need that. So first thing is to plot the y-intercept. So I always like to think of this as my starting point. We're going to start at the end at this negative 6. So I plot that point right there, negative 6. Okay, so far so good. And then you are going to find the next point because, you know, in order to draw the line, an accurate line, we need like at least two points, right? I like to do a few more, but you need at least two. So we got one so far. And then we're going to use a slope to find the next point. Okay, and we're going to start from the y-intercept. So remember, this is four. And if we want to, this is the only time we would really want it as a fraction. So it's like four over one, which means we're going to go up four. So from this y-intercept, one, two, three, four, and to the right one. So that's right there. All right, and let's see if I can do this so it can help, help you to see. So again, if we want another point, we just start from that point, one, two, three, four up, and then one to the right. And do you see how we keep on going? The, the dots all make the straight line. Maybe it looks like this to you, right? Straight line. All right, and so there's our line just like that. And uh, it is greater than, but it is not equal to, right? So which means that technically any of these points on this line does not work, can't equal it, right? So we are going to make that a dashed line, all right? So some things to think about. So if it is less than or equal to, less than or greater than, so there's no equal sign, this means that it is going to be a dashed line. I sometimes say dotted um, because that's just who I am. Uh, but here, uh, or if you have equal underneath, right, it's basically an equal sign, uh, an equal sign with a, like a less than right here like this, or equal sign and a greater than if they fuse together, right? It's like an equal. I can't make an equal sign, but you know what I mean, but it gets fused together. So if it's like this, this is, it, it can equal it. So this is a solid line, like the lines that we've been doing. Okay, so here it is dashed. And now how do we know which way to shade, right? If you remember the last lesson, right? A day one's lesson for throwing shade. Um, there was only one side where all the number, all the points worked, right? So we're gonna just pick a point and see if it works. And now a super easy point is zero, zero. So I always like to use zero, zero, but technically you can use any point, but that just means more calculations, right? More things to, to calculate. So I'm gonna try that point zero, zero and check to see if it works. So we're literally going to plug it into the inequality. So zero for y, zero for x, and four minus zero is zero. So zero minus six is negative six. Is it true that zero is greater than negative six? Yeah, it's true. So that means we're gonna shade on the side of zero, zero. So that's why, this zero, zero is on the left side, so we're going to shade all on that side. All right, that's how that works. Okay, some more practice. Um, and if you look right here, we did some matching. And uh, take a look at these and notice that the, uh, the ones without the lines underneath, without the equal sign, are both dotted. And the ones that are, that have the lines underneath, they are both solid lines, right? And then we are going to shade them. So notice that the y is greater than. So another way to think about it, and this only works if you have it in slope intercept form. It doesn't work in any other form, okay? So where's y greater than? Um, and if you look at this graph, this is where all the shading, where y gets bigger, right? Y gets bigger here. So that's gonna be this pink one. Where y is less than, notice that the shading is below, all right? So if you look at this one with the, the equality, the any, the, Let's turn to equal sign, right? Um, if you notice right here, this one's where we have the solid line and it goes lower, right? So that's gonna be this green one right here where it's less than. So we're gonna just, so this is the blue one is the only one that's left. So if we were to graph this, if you remember, start with, start at the back, it's gonna be negative three. So our y-intercept is at negative three. And then our slope is one half. So we're gonna go from here, gonna be go up two. Yeah, just kidding, up one up one and then to the right two. The reason why we're only going like half a box is because these uh, 
this is right here is negative three. So each box is worth uh, two, it's two units. So that's why we're doing that. So it's up one to the right two, up one to the right two. And we're gonna get this line right here. And it is solid because uh, it does have that equal to sign underneath. All right, and we're shading above. Sorry, I should refer to the back to this one. And it's uh, shading above because y is greater than, and this is where y is greater than, just like that. Um, that's what that looks like. We're gonna move on here. Oh, and another way to check it, I'm sorry. Uh, the way we had done it yesterday, which is the standard way of doing it, the algebraic way of checking is um, we're just plugging it in, plugging zero, zero in, right? Uh, we're checking a point on one of the sides and zero, zero is a really nice, easy point to check. And so if we plug zero in for both X and Y, we get zero is greater than or equal to negative three. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. So we're gonna shade on the side of zero, zero, just like that. All right, and again, this is some more practice. <laughs> Sorry for my shading, it's a little uh, crazy there. So I wrote some directions just to help you out if you're one of those people who like directions. So step one, um, plot the y-intercept, right? Start at the back. So our y-intercept here is three, right there. And it says, find a point on the line by using the slope. So again, we're gonna start at the y-intercept. And then notice right here that there is no number in front of the x, which means that it's a one. So it's a one or otherwise known as one over one. So we're gonna go up one and to the right one every time, up one to the right one. If you notice right here, it makes this line, diagonal line like this. And it is going to be, uh, what is it called? We did not talk about drawing the line. So draw line. Now remember if it is not equal to, but just less than or greater than, this is going to be dashed, not dished, dashed. All right, and then if it is equal to, so less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, this is going to be solid. And so for us, since it is uh, it's just greater than, uh, it is gonna be dashed. So if you notice right here, we have a little dash line like that. And then we're gonna check. So to shade, pick a point not on the line. So for us, zero, zero. And we're gonna plug it into the inequality. So zero is greater than zero plus three. And if you notice right here, zero is not greater than three. That's not true. So we're gonna shade on the other side. So X zero, zero is not a point on the line. I wanna make that a little bit more accurate there. So zero, zero is not a point on the line. Remember like how we did with the basketball, right? It was all the ones that she didn't make it, but she didn't meet her goal. Like those were all X's, right? So she didn't make, meet her, the, the goal. So where are all the points that work? On the other side. So that's where we shaded up here. All right, so here we're gonna do this two more times. Again, I would please try these out yourself before uh, you know, checking your answers here. All right, and again, so we're gonna start at four. Our slope is negative one third. So it means we're gonna, so either the negative can be on top or on the bottom, it does not matter, right? So if it's on top, that means we're gonna go down one and then three is positive, so to the right three, we get right here. If we decide to go, with the negative on the bottom. So here's my y intercept right here. So we can go up one or to the, and then to the left three. Either way, we're still gonna make the straight line like this. Okay, so it's always the exact opposite of what we had done. All right, down one to the right three or up one to the left three. And then uh, it is gonna be solid line because there is an equal to sign here. And then we're just plugging in zero. We put zero in for y is less than negative one third times zero plus four. The negative one third times zero is zero. And this is why I love zero because even if you have fractions, it changes those all to zero, right? So zero plus four is just four. So is zero less than or equal to four? Yes, that is, that is true. And this is not a choice where like, oh, is it less than or is it equal to? You know, which one is it? It's not like that. It's saying it's less than or equal to. It, it's, it's just a statement, okay? Um, so we're, we're the, the condition says it's e either can be less than or it can be equal to. We don't care which one, as long as it's one of them, okay? We're not giving you like a choice, like, do you want soup or do you want salad? But like, no, it's a super salad, okay? Um, so uh, it's, it's just, that's the statement, okay? This is not a question. So that's why, since it is true, we are shading on the side of zero, zero. Since zero, zero is below the line, that's where we shade. Again, over here, 
we're going to um, notice this is in standard form. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, like how we did before. We could change that to a slope intercept form, or what we did here is we just um, found the intercepts. So this is just a, another quick review to uh, find the intercepts. So again, if you want the x-intercept, that means y has to equal zero. So we're gonna plug in zero for y. So that's what we did right here. So two x minus zero is equal to four. The reason why here I I'm saying equals is because we're looking for a specific point. Okay. Uh, but then the, our, this is our inequality. All right, um, so we get two x equal to four, and then we're gonna divide both sides by two. So we get two, x is equal to two. So our y-intercept is, or our x-intercept is right here. All right, that's our x-intercept. And then our y-intercept is when x is equal to zero, because on the y-axis, this is where x equals zero. X doesn't equal anything else. And then if we plug that in there, so all we get left is negative y is equal to four. And the way you get rid of that negative is just multiply by negative one. So that's gonna be y is equal to negative four. So the y-axis, y-intercept, I mean, is gonna be right here. Here we have two points, let's draw that line. Um, if you wanna find other points, cause you're like, I need more points to make sure that I have this, uh, when I draw the line straight, um, you can just, I always like to start at the lower point and I go up four and then to the right two. So if I continue that pattern, go up four to the right two, I get my other points. Okay, and I think one of these points is a little bit weird. So from here, I went up one, two, three, four, and then to the right, two, should have been here. I think I went up three and to the right, two. So it's not that one. So it should go just like this. Ooh. All right, so it was a little bit off there, um, unless my eyes are off right now. Uh, okay, so again, the, this is still the same. And then we are going to check, and we do know it's dotted because um, it does not have an equal to sign underneath, but is dashed. And then we are gonna just plug in zero, zero to see since the line is not on zero, zero. So we can check to see um, if zero, zero is a point. So once we plug those in, is zero less than four? Yes, zero is less than four, that's true. So zero, zero is a solution, which means all the points on this side is a solution. So there we go. Now, um, and this is a worked example. If you want to take a look at it, there they do have a lot of explanation on here. So that's another good one to read. See, they do the test point of zero, zero as well, right? Not just me. And here we're gonna, uh, we're going the reverse way, given an inequality, can we figure out what the equation or the inequality was, right? And so if you look at this one, I always like to start with what I know. I know that the y-intercept here is two. So I would write down two. And then I can find another point on this line. So another nice point right here is uh, at one six. So at one six, so I'm, I always like to start at the lower point and then go up four and then to the right one. So my fraction would be four over one. And I could simplify that down to just four. Okay, so that's just four. So that's why I have the slope as just four. And how do we know if it's less than or greater than? Um, remember the Y is the simple way is that the y's are getting lower here and that's where it's getting shaded. So that means y is less than whatever this four x plus four, two is, all right? So there we go. And then the same thing with this one. Um, again, start with your y-intercept, which is negative three and find some nice points here. So um, I go up one and then to the right two. Let's see, I didn't know about this one, right? Let's say I, I saw this one first, right? So then let's see if that makes a difference. So I would go up one, two, so up two, then to the right four, right? So it's two, two up and to the right four, and I can simplify this down to, what well, look, one half, right? So it doesn't matter which two points you use because that fraction will always simplify down to one half on this line, all right? And if you don't believe me, try some other two points, all right? And um, there we go. And then since uh, this is being shaded up, it's gonna be y is greater than or equal to one half x minus three. Um, and the last one right here, uh, again, we're starting with our y-intercept, which is at negative two. And our slope is we need to find another point. We found one down here. So again, like I said, I like to start at the lower point. Um, and so this goes up three and then to the right two. Uh, just kidding, right four. So it'd be three over four. Uh, what would happen if you went started from the y-intercept instead? Well, 
you would go down three, which is negative three. So that is down three, and then to the left four, and that would be negative four. So what's negative three over negative four? Simplify down, that would be just three fourths, because remember the negatives just cancel out. So either way you do it, it's just that this is a double negative. I'd rather just have them all positive to begin with, right? So that's why I always start with the bottom one, uh, the lower one, I should say. Um, but it's up to you, your choice. Um, and then so that's going to be 3 fourths x minus 2. And then how do we know it's less than? Because it's shaded lower than. And remember, this only works if this is in slope intercept form. Um, and slope intercept form, if you were word, curious, is y equals mx plus b. Okay, This is slope intercept form. Okay, and the other form that you would not be able to do this is general form or standard form. It, has, it, it does both names. Uh, the book likes general form. I've learned it as, and I've taught it as standard form. So either way is okay, but you would not use it with this form. So you can't go, oh, it, since it's uh, less than, uh, then we go shade down. Can't do that because X and Y's are both on the same side. So you would not be able to do that. All right, and um, yes, and it is dotted, so that's why we did not put the equal sign underneath. All right, and that's the end of the lesson. Uh, make sure you do your practice. I would try to check out the exit tickets, and I will see you later. Bye.